you know, for those of you who have good memories, you will remember when the bridge was first mooted in the press, there used to be a lot of controversial arguments whether it should be cited or where it is cited. The truth of the matter is, <clears throat> people said that it was put in that location to miniaturize the town of New Amsterdam and to put the Afro Guyanese on to mount more than anything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but indeed, in fact, the bridge had a study done by three overseas consultants. And you can see up there that there is more than one. Yeah, there's the fourth site, which is below Everton. There are six different sites. The one that's ultimately chosen. Thank you. The one that's ultimately chosen is the one that the Edward we know. But the truth is, before I even knew about this, I was against the bridge. I was against the bridge because for one reason. In 1995, when they started walking by the Edivira where they have the dry dock, I was responsible for changing all the pontoons under the MRR bridge in 1995 and in 2001. So I knew that it was a nightmare. And not only it was very cost, very costly, the maintenance costs for these bridges were very high. So I was against it. But then Vincent Bassington, who was the head of the NISIL at the time, came to DDL and asked that we give him the opportunity to present an argument why we should invest in the bridge. I told Chairman yes, he was at the time, keeping money in his pocket. But he said, no, we couldn't. Because as a big local company, you have a civic responsibility to try and support an organization like this. So I said, OK, no problem. I said, but in that case, you would have to be our representative on the bridge. That's how come I became a member of the board. And in fact, I'm grateful that I became a member of the board. Because had it not been for my presence, I think the bridge would have been built in the wrong location. See the, the original structure for the bridge. If you look here, you see it look like the Demra Harbour Bridge, but this is the Borbish Bridge we're talking about. You see the expression and the pontoons? Mm -hmm. That's because how the bridge is configured. Is each one of the abutments are independent because of the arrangement. So this is the this is the original drawing given to given to the consultant, not the consultant, the contractor at the time. And this is what they actually ended up looking like right now. Where the pontoons are quite independent. That means that the, the bridge itself has to be affixed at each end very, very securely, unlike the Dema uh, Bridge. The, the return fare on the bridge right now, up till recently, was $2,200. The government is now subsidizing us with $300, so we pay $1,900 of the vehicle. But you look at this. Before then, when the ferry, a minibus was $800. If there were 14 passengers in the bus, car, the conductor had to pay. It'd be $1,120, so it cost $1,920 one way. And when he came back, assuming he was half full, it cost him another $1,300. So he was paying $280 compared to the $2,000, which he just pays a return fee. So that, that puts, not to say, puts to sleep all the nonsense about the fare being expensive. Just a comparison of the two bridges. The Mahar Bridge, one is good for design life for 10 years, the other one for 30 years. But it's interesting because the bridge is now 40 years old in August. So I mean, somebody looking after the welfare is health. <laughs> the Bobbridge Bridge is not as long, it's a little shorter, by a couple hundred feet. The width is the same. Number of pontoons, this is very interesting. There are only 39 pontoons under the Bobbridge Bridge, but there are 100, 300 of them are bridge. But they're much smaller, they're literally one quarter the size of these. The retract opening is the same. But in the case of the Demara Bridge, you have 26 feet under the high span. So years ago, when Barama first came to this country, their talks couldn't pass through the high span. So we circumcised them all up there and they could have passed through. <laughs> in the case of the Bobbish Bridge, it's about nine feet compared to 26 feet. So with this in mind, we were able to guide the contractor who was the, the contract for moving box site in the Bobbish River, Holland, a German company. They came with their pontoons and their talks geared to match this figure. So we didn't have any work to do in that case. Quite interestingly, and I'll explain a little bit more, the gradient of this high span at the Demar Bridge is 5%. That means you travel up 5 feet for every 100 feet you travel horizontally. But in Bobby's Bridge, it's a little, it's a little steeper. And there's, there's a reason for that. You can see that the high span will have to shift westwards accordingly. I put this in purposely. The high span, which is really both the path, will have to shift westward. That's more towards the Bobby's side, not the quarantine side. 
Now, I'm putting, it, I'm, I'm showing you these letters to show you that we had an earlier, an earlier episode of oil and gas. I should say this. When I got on the board in 2006, May, I got a whole lot of literature study. I started it very in depth. And then I realized, damn it, you know, these people putting the bridge in the wrong location. This is span. So this was this prompted this, this is September, because my first meeting I ever had on the board was in Albert. And you can see they're, they're saying that the nine hour shunt is uh, attached to this because they're going to look at the possibility of moving it. All these alternatives require rework for the consortium and the agreed bridge configuration results in a serious impact for the bridge. What the guys are doing here now is doing an early exam to try and set yourself up for a high fall. Like they need seven months delay. They're the, the trying that it's going, to take a, it's going to take a longer time to finish the bridge than it's anticipated. They actually realized that something was going wrong and so they said to the contractor, because now the contract had been awarded in August eh, of 2006. They said, you got to do something about it. So this is just covering their diarrhea, so to speak, which they did a good job of. Mm -hmm. What the guy said is they said months delay was the most important thing about it. Right, so we now come to a little bit about the bridge. This is it. If you're on the river and you're looking towards the Edward side, there's a big coca, the Edward, the Triple Gate coca, and this is where the bridge is going to be sighted. And to show you the amount of siltation, you see all of our, sorry, all of our rivers have very, very high siltation. For one reason, Amazon or Narco do a dirty job in us, but that's beside the point. You can see the, the Bobby's Bridge, you can see the, the land, and look at the amount of silt. So, Dredging had to be taking place just in front of the abutment so you can get the point within. See that little space across there? That's on the other side, Crab Island side, there you are. And you can see the civil wharf just about to start. Here we are putting tiles to the wharf and all the, all the structures that have to go up there. The, the guys are clearing the right away. There's a Crab Island going towards Palmyra. And this is a son of a gun to the wharf here because it's all in very, very soft, soft material. It's very interesting to know that what they did here. They, they, they bored some holes into the soil. And imagine a candle with a wick, but the candle stand is filled with the sun. A lens of sun was filled inside the, the, the holes, and a wick like a wick just to help to drain out the water and dry it out and evapotranspiration. So there's a lot of work, but we lost a lot of time because of bad weather, but nevertheless, it's a very good job. These are the pontons being offloaded in the Demerara River. And here they are. They do some rework. Very interesting. I must give you the contractors, the, the, the very, very, drove very hard bargains. This is a ponton that we were forced to lift out the water because we felt the paint work by the company in Vietnam was not good enough. Because when you, when you buy steel, you can buy steel with a pre coated color on it. In this case, they ordered orange, and then the first coat will be gray, and then the next coat, the final coat will be black. So when you look there, you, you can see whether any paint is. If you saw orange, you know the guy didn't do a good job. If you saw some gray, you know he didn't cover properly with the black. So this is some bit of reward going on there. Now, this is a big bone of contention. They, in their proposal, they said they would supply us with suction embedded anchors. All right? I don't know what part this is suction, but anyway, this is the anchor they supplied it, in essence. I did some research and realized that this thing had never been done before. So here we are, we've been faced to be the guinea pigs. Uh, and the, I must say that the bridge is still there, so obviously they got something right. But anyway, this, this is the anchor tool. The anchor is at the bottom, here it's pushed into the soil. And then you retract this, there's a chain that you pull on that will change the profile. I'll show you a better picture of this in a minute. Right? So here it is, when it's going down, when it's about to be pulled out to the mud, and it is anchored itself in the mud. Now, this is a tool on the back of the barge. This is a work, a work barge. This is an anchor installation tool, and you can see the anchor being fitted on the bottom there. You get a better picture of this. Now, here's the anchor. Now, now, for those of you who are lawyers and liars and engineers and all that kind of thing, there's an institution called FIDIC, 
Federation International, the Engineer Council, the Federation of International Consultants. So these guys have got a Bible. So we should do read the Bible, never tamper with it. These guys tamper with the God and Bible. Look out here. I'm sorry. These are the conditions under which it normally operates, but they change it. And this is what worries me with the Democratic Arab Bridge. I try to see Minister Patterson. I'm glad he has a representative here. But the guy more busy than anybody, man. You know why I want to see him? I want to tell the truth. Because these guys who come to Bell Bridge are so damn smart. They get used to delete clauses that should be left in. And this is one like, this is this is the genesis of our problem. This is the genesis of our problem. If you read that and you read this, it's two different things. Here we give you our because they got too many ladies in the audience. <laughs> so when, when this auction didn't work, we had to modify the tool and put some jets on so you could blow the, the motorway in the river to get the anchor down. But the truth of the matter is, this is all new stuff, you know. We, we never saw anything like this, and they never did any of this. This is the first time we tried to think, yeah, much of the credit seems to be working up till now. This is a GPS. Well, because they were running late, we couldn't start from building from the land. So we started building in the middle of the river and walked towards the east and the western abutment. And you could get away with this because of the GPS. And you got a little cell phone, you got it, you look at the Google map. You've probably seen about three satellites. So this wretched thing at fifty thousand dollars. That's what we released it for. We didn't buy it. We leased it for fifty thousand US dollars. We saw thirty satellites at the same time. So you can imagine how high. But in accuracy of my little my finger, one centimeter. This is all the items being sold in Bobby's as they arrive. Over seventy-five containers of oil. And this is the same compound by this way the ferry used to dock. So it's not a ferry. <laughs> so we slightly north. You can see the panels being assembled. Being floated out. Being transported to the location. Okay, you're about to meet the land. This is on the western abutment. A completely different configuration to the Bobby's River, to the Damara Harbour Bridge. I'll show you why. Here, this, this span is anchored to the land. These pipes are 120 feet long, on clusters of piles. Here, the cluster of piles, into which it has these big pipes, half inch wall thickness, and 18 inches diameter. But here, you see the span being attached to it now. This is where, this is I have a regional call, Eastern Abutment. I don't recognize anybody, I don't see Mr. Barnum. Do you order you in this picture, boy? You gotta look for somebody with hair from here, though. This is a high span, it's very high span, you know, where they both to pass on it. This bothers me because when you see the construction detail that is required to build this, no wonder we're in a quandary right now because if something happened there, we have none of this equipment be able to do any corrective work. It's very sad. It is almost completed now in location and it is finished. It's finally the passage on. I put, I put this in to show you the kind of vessel that will be passing under the ice pan. These are dumb barges. When I say dumb barges, they're not motorized. They either towed or put, pushed. Most of them they 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 towed. These barges are 300 feet long. 50 feet wide, and they carry 3,000 tons of bauxite at any one time. The bridge is such a big bridge. The spans are so big that the, the, the smallest span weighs 80 tons. The largest span weighs 120 tons. So we started doing some research in 2010. It took me about two years, and I finally came up with a solution, but the solution was very expensive. Just to buy this. This dumb badge, you have to motor. It doesn't have motor, so you have to sort of talk to carry it around. But they had a, they said, oh my God, crane, this is a little lift Jews, let me get a chance. It's so damn big, but it will do the job, because you lift 150 tons, you're only looking for 120 at the most. But look at the price. This is a 200 ton badge that costs around 360 degrees, which is important. It's self propelled, but it's 3.6 million. 
but none of it he got that kind of money. So what we decided to do was to do our own homework. With the help of IEL, the guys from in public, they call themselves. You didn't really have a pontoon. Now, you imagine you have a pontoon that's so big you can't do anything with it. So what we did, he built this pontoon in modules. You see the seven segments, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And so we could lift them and put them into the water with local effort, you know, the crane. And when they assemble, they look something like this. And you can see they got some jacks underneath the little jack of the bridge. And then you could remove the pontoon. But I'll show you how, that's how we plan to do that. Let's, let's assume there's a pontoon you want to change. There's pontoon number three, the number four, just for argument's sake. You say they dried up your jack of bars alongside. Here you got the alongside position. It's designed in such a way that you can pass under the bridge. Now, you have the problem of moving the chain that holds this pontoon. You see how this pontoon is held in position by a chain? You have to move it from there onto this point, move it from there onto this point, so to make sure that he is in position and the bridge doesn't float away. When you would have done that, you could jack up in this location and pull out that barge and push in the next one. Here's the other one, the replacement barge alongside. But you still got to move the chain up of that one, put it back onto this one. Having done that, you will successfully change it. But the truth is, you need to have big lifting equipment, which you don't have in this country. 